Hello everyone, so in this video I'm going to talk about upgrading your desktop system. And by upgrading, I just don't mean upgrading your hard drive to SSD or increasing your memory in your system. Uh, here I mean upgrading your motherboard. And when you upgrade your motherboard, you have to get the compatible CPU, you have to get the compatible memory, and combining all three, they can be very costly. So. Um, uh, I hope you guys find this video helpful and follow all my advice here and, and if you do have to uh, upgrade your system um, you have to do a proper research so that you can find um, a most economical system for yourself so that it will increase your uh, increase the performance of your system so what I did I found um, a motherboard on eBay for $80. To my surprise, it came with the uh, uh, CPU as well as uh, memory, but it was a uh, eight gig of memory, uh, which I'm going to replace it with 16 gig. But in any event, uh, uh, what I'm replacing here with is uh, Intel Core 2 quad CPU with four threads is 2.4 gigahertz. Now the, the CPU I got with the motherboard, uh, uh, it's uh, uh, Intel Core i7, um, four cords, uh, four cords, and eight threads, at 2.93 gigahertz, and I'm gonna put 16 gig of uh, memory in there. So combining all that, it's definitely gonna be ha have more performance than the the system. Um, I had previously so um, I hope you guys like this video and uh, uh, you just have to make sure you back up your system before you do anything I cannot advise this any further uh, backup is such an important factor in everything so uh, please take a look at my video and ho I hope you like this video Hi, so in order to find out uh, the specification of your motherboard, uh, basically you would have to go into the website of that company. So the one that I bought was a gigabyte. So in order for, for me to find out uh, for update, what kind of CPU it would support, what kind of memory it would support, what feature it has. So uh, what I will do, I will go onto the website uh, and just search for gigabyte. Okay, and once I get there, there's a site, I go there and go to the support. Now, let's say if this is Asus or if it's a Biostar, another company, uh, basically you go to that website and you go to support. So now we need to find out the model number here to get to the specific uh, uh, motherboard. So we have GA H57 um, M. Okay, so it's a USB 3. So there are two revision, revision one and revision two. Mine is revision two, and I'll tell you how I know. Okay, so basically, I got to that site and this is my motherboard so basically on this side so let's say um, can get to that I cannot uh, increase the size of it but in any event it shows over here if it's a revision 1 or revision 2 so um, basically they are the same in terms of um, the hardware and um, uh, specification requirement. So what we need to do, first click on CPU support and it will tell you what kind of CPU it would support. The one that it came with was this one, Intel Core i7, I, I7 H70, which is 2.93 gigahertz, eight megabits, uh, eight megabytes, sorry, and um, uh, it's a 133 megahertz uh, uh, front size uh, uh, bus. Uh, okay, and it has uh, the highest BIOS revision of 
F6, which I'll find out after I'll install it. So to find out uh, the memory requirement. So at least I know these are the CPU that it would support. Um, memory requirement, I would go into the support list. Okay, and here you go memory support list. Click on this download and here you go. You get the QVL, which is, uh, you know, each uh, company or each um, uh, motherboard uh, manufacturer have QVL list in their book or in their uh, website or in their manual. So um, this has like a several one, like uh, if I'm using DDR3-2200, which is not that many, okay, you have only one supported. And these are the, these are the, uh, the chips that already been tested. So always rely on what the manufacturer has recommended. Um, there's only one uh, uh, memory um, okay so it's a two gigabyte memory um, right so what we need we need to find out how we get to the maximum. Maximum is 16 gigabyte in that motherboard. So this is stick of two gigabyte is, and there's only four slot. So it's only gonna give us uh, eight gigabyte. And you know, it came with the uh, eight gigabyte of memory, uh, the one that I have. All right, so the next one is uh, 2133. And same thing, you have uh, only two sticks. Um, which are tested, and these are Kingston model, uh, two gigabyte, same problem. So I'm looking for actually four gig. So here it is, okay? What I did, I searched for this uh, model on eBay, and I couldn't find any, okay? So um, I didn't want to buy from Kingston website because it's going to be expensive. You could get it but uh, I was looking for four gig uh, stick and I didn't get it. So um, let me go on and look for another one to see if I can find, here it is. Okay, this is the one, sorry. This is, oh, come on. This is the one that I found, okay. Um, and it was for $15 for one stick on eBay, used one. So it cost me $60. And, uh, but at least I will have 16 gigabyte of memory. So if you, let's say if you have a different uh, company, you will do the same thing. You will search for a specific memory which has been tested on that motherboard to, to get it. So as a part of the upgrade, I saw this uh, motherboard on eBay um, and it's in an open box uh, so it's uh, almost new uh, for $80 and to my surprise it came with uh, 8 gigabyte of RAM and uh, first generation Core i7 already installed in it which was great so let's take a look at this motherboard all right, so take a look at this motherboard. It's a Gigabyte H57M USB 3. Now, H57 is chip uh, chipset, and M is a micro ATX motherboard, and it has a feature of uh, USB 3. So that's why they call this whole thing is uh, H57M USB 3, and it's a Gigabyte uh, motherboard. So let's open it and see what we got okay first thing we have this warning which says that onboard video output is not available unless paired with an Intel Core i5 Core i3 processor with Intel graphic technology now the CPU that came with it does not have um, integrated uh, graphic technology so therefore um, I would not be able to utilize uh, um, the integrated graphic of this motherboard but it's all right I already have a graphic card which will suffice my uh, my need 
uh, for a video okay so let's see what else we got we got this IO plate that goes in the back on the case uh, to install the motherboard we got uh, SATA cables and ID cables for hard drive if we have any HDD hard drive which probably not needed for many of us okay let's open the motherboard itself take it out of this anti-static bag and let's see Come on. sorry I have to do that all right there we go okay all right so um this one as it says is revision two uh, there are two revision of this motherboard revision one and revision two is uh, lga 1156 um, motherboard which support core i7 the first generation core i5 core i3 um, it has a capacity of uh, maximum capacity of 16 gigabyte of memory 8 gig came with it uh, apparently they have like a two gig stick in each of these slots I'm gonna put four gig sticks in each of these slots to make it 16 gig um, it has two uh, PCI Express this one is PCI Express 16 this is one is PCI Express 4 now if uh, any of you want to use Crossfire you may use it but it, it may not give you the same uh, performance because this one is uh, f 4 speed and this is 16 speed um, re two regular PCI ports uh, uh, and uh, there are some uh, internal USB connection it has USB 3 in the back um, this one is a front panel for uh, connection from the case itself uh, like you know power reset hard drive LED etc Okay, these are seven U uh, seven SATA two O connection. Um, this one is a power connection for the motherboard from power supply. This is IDE connection. This is floppy connection. Um, I may try floppy drive uh, five point two five. Uh, let's see what happens. Okay, um, and uh, these are you know these are this support supported dual channel so uh, when I install it they will be installed in a dual channel ca uh, ca capacity all right uh, this one is um, 12 volt for CPU itself I'll take this out to show you um, how to reinstall the um, the processor okay and uh, what else we have on this board okay those are the major one uh, let's take a look at the back panel all right okay here we go okay these are USB 2.0 this one is PS2 for older mouse or, or keyboard this one is VGA for older graphic this is DVI for graphic HDMI for graphic and display port for graphic new all these four I may not be able to use it because of integrated graphic but it's all right this is SPDIF for uh, digital audio these two ports are USB uh, as, as well as Firewire together this one is Firewire connection this one is eSATA connection LAN gigabit LAN and two ports of USB 3 and 7.1 audio channel okay all right so let's uh, take the fan out the the heat sink out and i'll show you how to reinstall the cpu all right so i took this out this uh, heatsink fan on the top of that and I'll show you what CPU that they had I'm gonna 
okay it's intel core i7870 it got some of that um, uh, thermal paste on it so i'm going to clean it and i'm going to put the um, the fresh thermal paste on it and then i'm going to close it so basically you know it's uh, and the installation if you have to get a separate cpu installation is pretty easy okay so if you have to get a separate uh, uh, cpu and i'll show you quickly how you install it so let me take this out first so basically what you do you press on this lever and move it out open the plate okay and lift very carefully lift the CPU out to be very careful with the pins okay all right so you take a look there is a arrow right here if you take a look that's your pin one and there is a pin one right here basically it goes with these two notches so you can put it wrong because your notches will match right there okay and you'll just drop it and it's in okay so you close the plate lift the lever close the plate and then That's it. Okay. So I've cleaned the um, thermal paste off uh, of the CPU. So you take a look. Uh, I use a little alcohol on the Q-tip, just a small amount and not too damp, and just uh, wipe it off, and then it came off. All right. So I'm going to apply this. Um, uh, I have this. Um, um, thermal paste that I bought from eBay and uh, it's uh, like a little over a dollar okay for two so not so bad okay okay so I'm going to apply the thermal paste right on the um, right on the um, the heat sink fan okay right there just a small amount and I'm going to spread it into this area. So let's see. Okay, I think that may be a little bit too much. But let's see. I'm going to spread it and clean it. Okay, so I applied the thermal piece and I spread it around evenly. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put this uh, heat sink on the top of the CPU. All right, so basically, um, I'm gonna put the fan right here into these one, two, one, two, three, four notches, okay? So, let's take a look. I got that, and let's see if I got them on this side. Okay. Right, I think I do have it. Okay, and I'm going to press on it. One. Okay, so I pressed on uh, these opposite side. Uh, I had to pause the video. So this one is in, and I will make sure that this one is in. So this fan is secured on the top of the CPU. So then now next, the next step is to put this CPU fan connection. So, okay, let me put this in. Use this hand. Okay, all right. So right there. Okay. It's in. All right. So basically it's a ATX uh, um, M micro ATS ATX micro motherboard 
um, and, and these are dual channel memory so I'm going to take these memory out once I get the other memory I'm getting 16 gig memory because this is a maximum 16 gig so I'm getting 4 gig for each dim um, these are 2 gig okay so I got the memory uh, 16 gig of uh, memory so uh, I'm ready to install this so basically I'll lift uh, I'll just open these uh, use this hand okay okay all right all right all right all right I'll pick these dims out one by one Uh, this is the memory I got okay it's a um, 4 gig uh, stick okay compatible with this motherboard so let's do it all right okay press on one side and then press on the other side Second dim. Press on this side. Press on this side. This side. Okay. Alright. Third one. Press over here, press over here, it's in, okay, fourth one, right, press here, press here, okay, so this board is ready to be installed now. All right, this is the um, system that uh, I'm replacing the motherboard on. Okay, so I'm going to open it up uh, and basically I'll take a picture to see uh, what is connected and where it's connected. And then I will disconnect everything from the motherboard to take the motherboard out. All right, so I'm going to open uh, uh, one of the covers. I probably will have to open both sides uh, to take the motherboard out and drop that. It's okay. Alright. Okay. Alright. out okay all right one of the fin on the side got disconnected it's okay I know where this goes but I'll take a picture just to see where everything is connected so basically there are three fans one is over here okay one is in the front uh, which is hidden here and one was on the side that I just took it out okay so let's all right, so I got three hard drives in here, um, and uh, uh, one of them is uh, uh, there are two S SSD. One SSD has nothing in there, so I'll take that one out. And one of the SSD is uh, important one is the main drive, and this one is uh, FTP server. Okay, um, there are uh, two uh dvd burner 
all right let's see then uh, we have um, I have an extra um, uh, this this card I have this um, uh, land card I'll take that out I'm not even using it I don't know why I put it in there this is the um, video capture card I'll take it out this one is um, a USB 3 uh, O card I'll take that out uh, uh, the other motherboard already have a built-in 3.0 and this is a video card which I would need okay um, let's see all the other connections um, uh, that I have to take out over here let's see I have a front panel connection um, I have a front panel connection here okay uh where did it go okay this one over here let me just move it this one is um this one right here is audio uh, front panel audio um this one right here um is uh usb one is on the side one is in the um I believe both of them are in the side. Uh, okay. Okay, and uh, over here, I got a Q connector right there, um, this, which is a front panel connection. So um, I'll take that one out and to connect into the other motherboard uh, probably wouldn't use same Q connector but uh, um, the motherboard is already be marked uh, for all the connection okay um, let's see okay these are um, uh, SATA connection uh, one is for uh, regular hard drive HHD the other is uh, other two are for uh, uh, two SSD drive and other two are for um, uh, DVD. Okay, I have to take those out. Um, let's see what other connection I need to take out. Obviously, I will I will be taking out the CPU power connection, CPU fan connection, um, which is right here. CPU fan connection is right here. Okay, and um, uh, let's see what else have to be taken out of this. Uh, I think that's about it. And uh, the main, the main one is uh, the uh, motherboard, motherboard power right here. Okay. I want to point out here this is the this whole thing is the motherboard power okay um, and obviously these fans connection okay one in the front and one in the back um, all right so let's get started okay actually uh, as I was showing this one is a front uh, or side USB connection this one is a card connection there is a multi card reader uh, which is installed right here it's going along as I can show you right there this is the card connection uh, uh, which is connected in the front and it can read SD card can read micro SD card and other uh, uh, various cards that it can read
one CP uh, motherboard power connection. Okay. Okay, motherboard is now free of all connection. So I'm gonna open, I'm gonna uh, unscrew the motherboard and uh, take the motherboard out. the plate for the new motherboard and it goes over here all right so I put this motherboard in uh, against the the back plate right here okay um, Against the back plate right there, and um, just putting a screw. I put one screw right here. Uh, okay, uh, where we go? Where we go? Okay. All right. I put one screw right there, uh, and one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, and I'm gonna tie them up right here okay so power connection into the motherboard right let's put this out of the way okay that's how it's gonna go Alright, so now it's a uh, turn for CPU power. So that's where it's gonna go. Okay. Alright. Okay, now audio connection. Okay. Alright. This is where it's gonna go. Okay, so now uh, front panel uh, case connection. Okay, so as you could see, uh, I'm going to put the speaker first, and it shows the speaker goes on the um, other side uh, with the plus on the left side, and the minus is on um, right side. Okay, so if you take a look uh, at uh, the speaker, okay, now uh, if I show it very closely, uh, I don't know if it, it shows or not, but uh, there is an arrow, let me see if I can... a light okay you see on the left side there is a arrow okay that's where that's the uh, positive so it's gonna go this way okay so it's it's gonna go this way all right 
so where are we going? We're going right here. Okay. So speakers are in. Okay, so next one is uh, <clears throat> reset switch. So as you could see, reset switch is in the front. Uh, it's showing up uh, right there. Um, and the plus is on the right side and the minus is on the left side. Okay. And now these, those are the two pins on the, on the front portion, not on the back. Back is the power. So let's take a look at the reset switch. Okay, now this is the this is the reset switch. Uh, I don't know if uh, you could see. Maybe I have to put a light on it. Uh, <clears throat> Okay, reset switch. So you see uh, the arrow is on uh, left side. So that is the positive. So basically it shows that uh, positive is on this side. All right, so I'm gonna put that in the reset. So reset is done, power is on the other side. Now, if you look at it closely, let me move the wire away. It says power is uh, plus on the left side and minus is on the right side. Okay, so when we take a look at the power, okay, so as you could see, the plus is on the left side. So, what do we do? We put the power in. <coughs> All right, this came off, okay. So let me just stop this. And... Okay, so now, uh, what left is uh, uh, HD, uh, hard drive uh, LED. Now, as you see HD, uh, the plus is on the left side and minus is on the right side. So let's take a look at our right, so plus is on the left side. Right, so this is what we we'll do. We'll take this. Let me hold it from here. Put it like that. Okay. And make sure power. Alright. LED. Okay. So HD LED is in. Okay. okay, so now uh, we're working on USB front panel. So, okay, uh, I'll just use this one, uh, second one. Oh, I, I could use the third one. Let me make sure that. That's how it's going to go. All right, it's secured. Let 
now. Okay, now the uh, extension card, uh, the card reader. I can put the card reader right there in this. they're connected to so basically let me just fix the wire and okay I'm going to put the fan extension and I'm gonna zoom in where the fan connection is and I'm gonna put this in right there Now this one has one, two, four. okay, it has one, two, three, four connection, and we have three of them. So I'm gonna just connect all three in there. All right, so I have connected, uh, you know, the back fan over here from that extension, and the front for fan over here and one of these will be connected to the side panel when I'll uh, close the panel okay these are all fan connection covering coming from one connection on the motherboard all right so now we are going to connect the SATA cable so first one is uh, is this um, uh, CD-ROM okay so there we go all right second one is also a second CD-ROM second one is okay it's gonna go right there okay these two are in then we have um, E we have an E setter in the front on the side so let me make sure okay this is where it's gonna go okay this E setter okay now hard drives okay, okay this one is um, this one is uh, uh, FTP server hard drive HDD okay all right and this last one is your main hard drive okay all right so there's another blue one left over here so this is going to go in this SATA connection okay I'm just going to fix some of these wire to make it less clutter otherwise it looks okay all right so now we're going to install uh, the video card here for that I will have to take out this metal part here and all the other I will have to fill in with the uh, all, all over here I get a fill in okay so let me just do that okay so let's put the video card in
Okay, I'm going to secure it with the screw over here. Actually, I didn't realize that I have um, a clip here, so I don't need to put um, a screw. Okay, so basically this clip will do it. All right, so now system is ready to have it tested. So I'm gonna close up the side panel and plug everything and test the system out. All right, started now. Let's see. Okay, I'm in a BIOS. All right, so I'm gonna do some setting of the BIOS. Uh, and uh, okay, uh, let's see what we got. All right, these are a CPU setting uh, or a memory setting. Uh, I don't need to do any changes here. Okay. some reason the CPU temperature is high why should be that high so I'm going to be keep monitoring it this CPU tend to run higher anyway Okay, I'm going to check the settings. Okay, temperature is, uh, CPU temperature is fluctuating a little bit, but it's staying within a degree. Uh, I'll continue to monitor anyway. So we don't have to make any changes here to escape. Okay, then we go into standard CMOS feature, uh, CMOS features, and uh, we got, uh, all right, the first two are um, DVD uh, drive. Um, then we have uh, uh, Samsung SSD 860, which is our main one. Okay, so, all right, so uh, halt on all but keyboard. I'll leave this on. Okay, escape. Uh, advanced BIOS features. Okay, hard disk boot priority. We gotta enter that. Okay, so Samsung should be the first. Okay, so let's select this one and move this up. All right, and let's see, escape. There's nothing more in here. Uh, okay. What do we have? Quick boot. We want to enable that. Okay. All right. First boot device. Hard disk. Let's just say. Okay. Hard disk. Then we don't have second boot device. Okay. Uh, all right, that's fine. Okay, second is CD-ROM, third is floppy. Um, don't have floppy, so we're gonna disable this one. Uh, all right, uh, password check. We don't have that. All right, smart. Uh, should we check that? Let's do this. Oh, it's gonna delay. It's gonna okay, limit CPU ID max to three. Disable that. Okay. Delay for HDD. That's fine. You know, full screen. Uh, logo show enable. 
a backup BIOS image to HDD. Uh, let's see what does it say. Uh, if BIOS data is corrupted by any means, such as I'll be used to. Okay, all right, enable that. Okay, enable that. Initial display first, PCI. Uh, let's see, PCI. Okay, I selected uh, PEG, which is a primary uh, display uh, PCI Express graphic. PCI Express graphic 2, I don't know what that is. So I'll leave that on. Okay, uh, oh, it did go through. Okay. Enter. All right. Okay. Okay. Now, integrated peripherals. Okay. Integrated peripheral. Extreme hard drive. X hard drive what does it say enable disable uh, okay all right I gotta change the mode though PCI um, PCH SATA to ACH H A H C I okay and then USB control enable, USB legacy enable, USB storage fund enable. Azilia Kodak and auto onboard 1394 enable, onboard LAN enable, green LAN disable. What is green LAN? Okay. Disable a smart LAN, press enter. Start detecting a port, okay. All right. Okay. Smart LAN, press enter, okay. On board, decide whether to invoke the boot round of onboard LAN chip. Uh, no, okay. Onboard US3 controller is fine. SATA IDE device enable. Okay, and I gotta change this mode again to AHCI. Onboard serial port is fine. Okay, power management. Okay, power management. Uh, soft off by power button, instant off, fine. Uh, enable, power on by ring, enable, resume by alarm. Uh, I don't know. Do I want to do power on? Where modem can wake the system from a news. Okay, that's fine. Uh, okay, I gotta change that to 64 bit. Okay, power on by mouse. Uh, uh, no, power on by keyboard disable. Uh, password is not on. AC back function soft off okay what is this ERP support uh, okay all right PC health status okay CPU temperatures okay 54 it's fluctuating between 53 and 54 okay uh, 
okay cpu warning temperature i wanna enable that uh, 70 degree uh, yeah but I, I better do that because it can damage the cpu okay CPU fan fail warning, yes, enable that, okay, system fail, okay, uh, enable that one also, okay, CPU smart fan control enable, CPU smart fan mode auto, that's fine, okay, uh huh, save and exit okay yes all right let's see okay so i restarted the computer and i think i had to make changes into the bios so let's see what happens now okay So window is loading. Alright, so let's see. There are light. We ran into the problem of uh, window not being activated, but let's see what happens. Okay, all right, getting device ready. Device is ready. Right. Okay, let me log in. Aha, Microsoft account problem. Let me take a look at this. Okay, so when I right click on this PC and left click on property, it says the window is not activated. I have to work on that. I probably will have to um, enter the product ID again. All right, so I'll take care of that. Now, in terms of uh, uh, checking uh, the speed and everything, so first take a look at the task manager. Okay, remember what we had over there. Okay, we had, see, CPU is only 2%. Memory is 19%, 18%. Okay, now I haven't run, I'm not running everything, so uh, just run. Uh, I'm going to run one more program and just double check it again. Let me check the benchmark. Okay, let's check the benchmark.
Alright, it is better than the other one. At least it shows some over here. Okay. Alright. Memories. So I'm going to work on that Microsoft account and this thing is all done. Okay, so I re-entered my product ID and window is activated. It says right here. Okay, so basically that's what you have to do. Uh, keep, make sure you have your product ID available when you upgrade your motherboard and CPU. Uh, because Microsoft uh, will say that uh, you're using an unlicensed copy. All right. Thank you very much for watching. Now I'm running all the same program that I was running on that the other computer. And look at the difference. Look at the difference. CPU usage is 10% and memory usage is 22%. Same program. So it does make a big difference if you upgrade to a little bit uh, more than what you have on your system. Hi, so this is the final version of that uh, upgraded PC. Um, uh, one thing I'll tell you that uh, after I did everything, uh, after about 10 minutes uh, of that, I got a, a blue screen of death, which is BSOD. And uh, first the BSOD code was that uh, hardware error. So it was a big challenge for me because it would not have any more information. Uh, so it could be anything. So um, I, I tried to restart the computer without changing anything. And uh, I realized the second time it says memory management uh, code. So I knew, I knew it was something to do with the memory. Then the third time I tried that, it gave me IRQL which is uh, interrupt request error, which is related to memory because interrupt request uh, in the computer system, uh, it, it, they are used uh, for instruction and it waits for uh, CPU to process one and then another process goes. So interrupt requests play a major role. So I knew it has to do with memory. So what I did, um, uh, first I took all the memory bank out, uh, memory uh, sticks out and I put two memory in a dual channel capacity. And uh, then everything was fine for a long time, for three hours, everything was fine. Then I said, okay, let me switch the uh, memory bank. And I switched the memory bank, it's still fine. So I said, okay, it's not the memory bank problem. So let me check each uh, memory stick one by one. I did that and no problem. So there was no problem with the memory. So I said, okay, so I put three sticks, still no problem, okay? The moment I put the fourth stick, I got the blue screen of death. Um, so um, I knew it has to do with the maximum RAM or whenever I fill in uh, the four, all four banks, uh, something happened in the motherboard that it doesn't like. Um, so the maximum uh, supported memory on this uh, motherboard is 16 uh, gig. So, and I had 16 gig. So I said, all right. Uh, so what I did, I took out uh, one of the uh, memory stick and I replaced it with that eight, uh, with the two gigabyte uh, stick I have from the, from the motherboard that I bought uh, and that I was putting it away. So that gave me 14 gig. The moment I put it in, everything was fine. In fact, it was fine for 12 hours and there was no problem. So um, this is just one of those things that I hope uh, you guys don't get it, but if you ever get that, um, especially in Windows 10, whenever you get BSOD, um, if most likely it has to do with memory, most likely. If not, then it could be driver uh, of um, uh, video card. 
So uh, that would be a driver problem. That's the second thing. Third thing could be you have um, a bad sector on your hard drive and some of your um, system files are corrupt because of those bad sector. Then you get the uh, BSOD. And the fourth thing is like if uh, everything is heating up inside, CPU is heating up uh, and not proper cooling, that will also give you BSOD. So just keep in mind, uh, I hope you guys never get that, but when you get that, it's scary, especially when you do not know much and give you a code and then you'll be looking for information all over the place. So I hope uh, this video, overall video help you and I mean, I uh, look at look at the performance now. If I look at the uh, task manager, look at that. I'm running this application, and CPU is 36, 37, 35 percent. Whereas when I was doing on the other PC, it was almost 70, 75 percent, and the memory was like about 44 percent. And now it's like 28%. If I'm running, if I'm not running this application, the one that I'm recording right now, the CPU would be like about 11, 12%, and the memory would be like around 12%. <coughs> Excuse me. So um, certainly this uh, is well worth it for me. Um, I spent eighty dollar on the motherboard and sixty dollar on that memory, and I probably will keep that memory uh, to be utilized either on this computer or another computer. So I hope you guys like this video. I hope this video helped you, and please like it. Sh you may share it, and please subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much for watching. Hi. So it's my hope that uh, next time you upgrade your system. Um, this video will help you. Uh, just make sure that you uh, back up your system and follow some good advice here and uh, just follow through and uh, you will be fine. Uh, thank you very much for watching. I hope you like this video uh, and uh, please you may share it and like it and you may subscribe to this channel. Thank you very much all.